Yeah, you feel me? Welcome back to the lunch table, Food oh, for Thought. Man. I'm Nico Blitz. You already know where to hit that subscribe button, man. Shout out to my next guest. I actually just got introduced to him because he did a freestyle on Bootleg Kevin DJ Head, and I was thoroughly impressed with his freestyle. Um, he just came out with a project called Knucklehead. Tommy Sketch. What's, What's popping, bro? What's up? Good looking out, though. You impressed on the freestyle. You know, so the freestyle impressed me, but then when I actually listened to the project... <laughs> The fact that it was so cohesive from the beginning to end and you actually had a message to say, that's what made me be like, yo, Tommy Sketch <laughs> is fucking dope, bro. Uh, good looking out, bro. Good looking out. You it was very intentional. We we big on that. Everything got intent behind it. You know, we don't yeah. just wing it. You feel me? So everything is intentional. So I appreciate that. I mean, that's what you need to go with, man, especially coming out as a new artist. I feel like it's a lot easier for me to dif differentiate the people who are in it for short term and people right. who are in it for long term and I, and I think for the fact that you came in with good and purposeful intentions for mm. knucklehead that's mm. what made me be like yo like yeah. i th i could see tommy sketch going on for a long ass oh, time man, man that's a huge compliment good looking out bro I no I, I gotta tell you though like my favorite song from the project is actually nine millimeter oh i swear because you flipped <laughs> it between like you know i gotta choose between this nine millimeter or this nine to five job and i'm like woo, <laughs> and he's singing on it and he got a little bit of g-funk in it you like feel i'm me? feeling it bro feel me? heck yeah it's crazy because uh when we first did that, that record was actually, um, that was one of the like oldest records I had. It was just an idea at first. I had mm. it on this beat that I had made. And I was like, dang, I could turn this into something way bigger. Yeah. So I got with my homie Don, Don D'Estro. And I was like, bro, you know, this track right here, this could be way bigger. And we got inspiration from a, a few records. Can't really think of which ones it was, but we was like really vibing in the studio that day and got a whole group of inspiration. We had my homie Garrett there, Garrett from, I think he from Salt Lake. Shout okay. out to Garrett, you feel me? He like came Salt Lake City? Yeah, he okay. came down. He came down and he uh, did the keys on it. You feel me? And uh, funny, we got our other homie Garrett. It was two Garretts on that track. <laughs> two Gs. What up, Gigi? But we had him on the track and he did the talk box. Mm. We didn't even know we needed the talk box until we heard the talk yeah. box. We was like, oh, damn, we needed this shit. No, I think it was the talk box that really got me because, no. you know, going back to like the G-Funk era of hip hop, it was like, oh, yeah. it was one of those things that made the record feel that much more oh, yeah. nostalgic, bro. Oh, yeah, with some DJ quick type. Exactly. You know? See, you already know yeah. what I'm talking about. Intent, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's all you intent, know? man. But, yeah. you know, like, I got to ask you, like, you know, you explaining on that song, like, you got to decide between like choosing the nine millimeter mm -hmm. or the nine to five job were you ever put in that situation or was it a uh, situation where you were kind of like <laughs> describing somebody else's situation you know the knucklehead ep uh there's some stories on there that are that are like like highly and heavily inspired by my life mm. but i felt like that one like it was so relatable like i didn't have to even talk about my life with that one i feel like a lot of people can relate so not me necessarily, I've never had to, you know, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a get this nine and I'm going to go do this and do that because I can't work the nine to five. But, you know, as a, as a minority, we often feel helpless. You mm. feel me? We often feel powerless. So we will be in a situation where we're like, okay, I don't want to be here. But I have to do this because I have no other. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure probably probably at least eighty percent of us had that thought. Like even if we don't have the heart to go out and do something as reckless as that, we sat there and was like, man, I wish I had a plug. I wish I had an. I wish I had it. I wish I had. Mm -hmm. You know, just to get out of that, just to feel free. You know, we long for freedom. You feel me? So. Yeah. I feel you. That's why um, it kind of reminded me of a uh, J Cole's record when he was talking about like you either sell dope rap or go to nba facts because you know what i mean as minorities it's just like we're not really given too many choices because yeah. of the resources that are given like yeah. you know in our communities do you feel like that you know do you feel like that it's the lack of resources that prevent us from actually like going out and doing what we want to do uh it, it's it's the lack of resources for sure but it's also what we what we've seen, you know, what, how we portrayed in in the movies, and mm. we're all about entertainment. Like that's what we. It's like that's what we're here for. You know, you see a lion in a in in a zoo or a monkey in a zoo. They're there to entertain. That's what they're there for. And I feel like that's what we see. We're here to entertain. What do we do? That's not entertaining. We playing ball. Mm -hmm. We fighting on YouTube. We the, the girls is twerking on YouTube. We rapping. We whatever we doing is all entertainment. Yeah, that's all we do. And even when we do have like a, and, and and I love it though. You know, even when we have the doctors or the or the lawyers or the, it's like okay, 
uh, let me post this pic and look cute. You know, so it's mm-hmm. like we, we, you know, but that's what we're about. And I feel like um, not necessarily like hold us back. You know, we you we take things that would have been a downfall mm. and polish it and make it, you know, so we, you know, so I don't know. It, it, it's bittersweet. You yeah. Feel me? Well, you know, that's why I feel like hip hop is definitely the biggest genre uh, in the world because, you know, like. You guys obviously started it, and you know a lot of hip hop actually came from like pain, yeah, and struggle. It's the blues, yeah. We be laughing at that. Me and my homie Don, we be joking about that. Though. <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of music nowadays, they be like, "Oh, I was so cold. I was in the trenches. I was outside. I was hungry." You feel yeah. me? So it's like it's blues for sure, and um, it, it it did start on that. That's that's where it started, and it's crazy because. Nowadays, as for the younger generation, like, I mean, like, I'm saying it like I'm real old, but, you know, the <laughs> younger generation, we look at hip hop like it's like, okay, this is the biggest, you know, but there mm-hmm. was once upon a time where they wouldn't let hip hop in. Yeah. They would, there were no award shows for hip hop. Like, I think the first BET Awards, I mean, that's not a hip hop awards, but, you know, the BET Awards, the first one was what, 2002? 2000, you know, it was just like Can the other day. we get a fact day. check on that? Yeah, we got to yeah, get a yeah. fact check. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it was like 2001. Within the past two decades, for You sure. feel me? Yeah. So it's like, they wouldn't let hip-hop in. You know, like hip-hop artists, like like back in the day in the 80s, like the Will Smiths, the LLs, they would boycott certain award shows mm-hmm. that they would want them to attend because they were bigger than just hip-hop artists. They were actors, so they wanted them to be a part of that, but they would boycott it because they wouldn't let us in. They wouldn't They wouldn't consider hip-hop real music, mm. and for a long time, they wouldn't. You feel me? But nowadays, I feel like even though hip-hop has become so, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to, you know, but it, it isn't as lyrical or whatever, whatever you want to say. Yeah. I still appreciate it because I feel like like Picasso, a lot of people couldn't comprehend his art, mm. but it's like, who are you to tell Picasso where to stroke his paintbrush? Yeah. So it's like hip hop is so impactful nowadays, no matter how we put, how we paint our canvas. It's like, whatever they talking about, however they doing it, it's still this impactful and the youth is like, got all eyes on it right now. You feel me? So, yeah. I hear you, man. Can I take a sec? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I got fishy, but it's oh, <laughs> we, we taking a break? We taking a live break right now? No, it's just- it was really bad. I, I don't like, even want to cut this out it. because I this look, is actually pretty on, funny. I look on camera though. Know, How the hell we go from like a serious <laughs> ass moment that's like, yo, bro, like I gotta fix your shirt one time. How did you look on camera? Oh, you you look yeah. you look yeah. gravy on camera, bro. Hey, on camera look gravy, so it's straight. You feel me? Good Shout out to the out. Queen Bee, you know, Shout she she gotta like she gotta fix up the the you know facts, facts. Yeah, like in the house. So then the Knucklehead E P. Uh, right, so what was really the inspiration behind that, Tommy? Man, like I want, I really wanted to paint like a picture of the mindset of a guy that's like in the hood. You feel me? But not necessarily. Like we've heard songs about that guy that said, "Okay, I'm from the hood. I got this nine. I got this chopper, and I use it daily. And I do this, and I do that, and I game bang, and mm-hmm. I sell drugs." We heard that story. You feel me? But. And we even heard the story about the guy that said, okay, I don't really bang, but like I'm with my homies and we just do it, you know? Mm-hmm. But we never really hear the story of the guy that's like, man, I really want to do this, but I don't know where to start. Like, I'm just on hmm. the porch. I'm watching all this. I'm from, I'm on the porch watching it. I'm from the hood, but I'm not from the hood. Yeah. Like on the songs, I'm from the hood, but I ain't from the hood. So I got to, you know? So it's like... I, I felt like that story was so necessary, you feel me? Because it's rarely ever heard. People, um, they would see a young black man from the hood and automatically assume that he is from a gang or mm. he has sold drugs. Or But there are people from the hood that that just they just exist, you yeah. feel me? And they don't dabble into that world. It's like, we here because this is what we could afford. You feel me? We not here because like we want to be hood. This is what we could afford. You yeah, know? So. it's like you just so happen to be there because Facts. that's all your family could really like, Facts. you know, be in right now. Exactly. So then, for you, like, did you find yourself like really dabbling with the hood, or did you just feel like you existed amongst everything that was happening? It's crazy because like I'm 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 straight from the hood. Mm-hmm. I'm straight from the hood, but I was that kid that you can ask like all the homies I grew up with today. They're gonna be like, oh, Tommy is square. Tommy is square. <laughs> Tommy never. Tommy never. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. But even the squares from the hood, they fought. You feel me? They fought and they they struggled just like everybody else. It's just like they weren't the ones like gang banging and shooting and, and mm-hmm. banging on people. You feel me? I never 
felt like that was like like smart or necessary. I was like, okay, what for? You know, we we only looking at each other to like where are you from? I, I was more like a creative. I wanted to just do art my whole life, you feel me? But but like definitely just straight from the hood, you feel me? Like I would never try to make it seem as if I'm better than them or I mm-hmm. think better than them or we it's the same thing, you feel me? So I gotta ask you, man, like you being in a situation where you decided to, you know, not go with like all the gang shit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you receive backlash from your hood for not yeah. wanting to do any of that? Because I'm sure there's people in that same situation who's just like, well, shit, I feel like I'm kind of caught in the corner. Like, do I do this because, you know, like my family and friends like are kind of pressuring me or can I choose to like do something else? It's crazy because like I never I never was pressured. You feel me? Like my family did it. And they weren't the type to like, oh, because we from here, you going to be from here. Mm -hmm. They just was from there and did their own thing. And they never included me. Like I always was, I I was, I was always sort of a loner, even in my household, I was a loner. (laughs) I I was the kid with the imaginary friends. You feel me? So, but when I would. Shout out to Foster, you know. (laughs) But when I would, when I would go around, they would really look to me and, 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 and be like, dang, you know, his head on straight. Mm-hmm. You know, they ne- they never looked at me like, oh, he he a, he a punk, he a, nah, never. They looked at me like, oh yeah, this is how I want to be. He's mm-hmm. inspiring me to be a better man. Niggas will wa- people will watch their mouth when I speak. They'll be like, oh, I can't cuss around Tommy, or I can't smoke around Tommy, or I can't. You feel me? But I'm like, nah, bro, I don't judge. Yeah. But it's just that respect they have for me. You feel yeah. me? I ain't trying to say I was that dude in the hood with the respect. Like I wasn't in the street at all. You feel it me? sounded like you were the guy who like. Had the biggest chance of like making it out. Oh, dog, man, <laughs> I am. <You> know? <laughs> <laughs> Old boys laughing they over there, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, facts. And they, in in this, and what I love, they still watching me. Like people that I grew up with, they watching me and they rooting me on. You feel me? And I always like look, like look back and like hit them up, like, yeah, bro, it's happening. Yeah, you feel me? And they always be like, oh, we always knew it could happen. He was always different. Like from a child, he was always different. I always was just to myself. I was never one of the, the little boys running with the pack and game banging mm-hmm. and all that. I was never that. You feel me? So what were you doing at like that young age? Were you really like into the rapper shit? Like what were you doing that was like keeping you out of everything? Well, well, my dad, he was that real strict parent that was like, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Even though we we wanted like every kid wanted the game bang. Like mm-hmm. we wanted the game bang. You feel me? We wanted to hang with the game bangers, but I knew that that wasn't like. That wasn't like the safest route, and my dad will always like keep us cautious and keep us like, oh, don't wear this, don't do this, don't do that, because he come from that, you know. So uh, I just was just on my rapping, rap music since I was in fourth grade. I was rapping. Damn, you feel me? I mean, I wasn't recording music, but mm-hmm. I was writing music since fourth grade. Was writing raps. You feel me? So yeah, that's all I've been doing, writing and, and drawing. What the hell were you writing about in fourth grade? Guns. <laughs> Guns and shooting stuff I don't know nothing about. <laughs> stuff I don't know nothing about. But yeah, my first song, it was called Tommy Gun. I didn't know. Tommy who, Guns. I, <laughs> facts. I didn't if know I can recall, that. like I remember being on MySpace and there was actually a rapper back then named Tommy Guns. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 know who, I know who Tommy Guns is. <laughs> yeah, man. So then when do you pick up the, uh, the moniker Tommy Sketch? Uh, when I was fourteen, actually, you said you draw. Yeah, is that, yeah. Is that why? Like, it makes yeah. okay, okay. See, see, it's clicking. It's, it's clicking, clicking, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I draw. I start rapping in fourth grade. I got a homie named Mark. He was rapping before me, and he was like, uh, "I was, I was like, dog, I'm gonna rap with you." Mm-hmm. He said, "Like, teach me." And he was like, "If you teach me how to draw, I teach you how to rap." You feel me? And I was like, "I right, for sure." And I, I gave him like this little drawing little like how to draw a little book mm-hmm. he ain't never taught me how to rap but you know <laughs> that alone started me mm-hmm. when he was like i'm a rapper and i'm about to have a music video we in the fourth grade and i was like how like how is that even possible mm-hmm. and it wasn't for him at the time but he like built that that hope in my mind and i was like yeah i'm about to start doing this too so i just follow suit just start writing you know and it was whack at first, but eventually, you know, I got there. What kept you going then? Man, you know what? It's like when I when I become passionate about something, I never stop it. There's never been something I started that I stopped. I always I always stuck to it. Like everything I start, I still draw. 
I still paint. I cut hair. Like anything I like to do, I just yeah, do it. Man, I should have hit you up, bro. I was bro, looking I for a barber like all day, bro. bro. I would have <laughs> hooked you up. Like I'm clean with it, bro. I'm cold with the blades, bro. I would have hooked it up. Man. But like anything I do, I, I, I stick with it. Like I, if I have a, a real like strong love for it, I stick with it. And as far as music, I felt like I was always alone. And I was always, like I said, I had imaginary friends. Like, I would literally sit there and talk to myself. Mm -hmm. And I felt like music was just that way, to, you know? And I was like, dang, one day people are going to hear this. And people are going to want to talk back. I, find, I feel like you find yourself so caught up in your thoughts. Dog, it's crazy because that's me all day. You feel me? Like, I'll be, I'll be, like, I will forget to do so much, like, necessary things in life. forget to eat, shower. <laughs> All the shit, bro. I'd be on the same shit. I'm telling you. Bro, I would forget to eat, bro. Yeah. I would just really like like be there and just be thinking all day like what I have to do, what I did, that, 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 and all that. And that would be me all day, just thinking all day. And people would be like, What's wrong? Why he not he just sitting there and, and it's just me thinking. I mean, what was really going through your head? Like, you know, like I, I know, you know, between like the rapping and the drawing and like barbering too, it's mm -hmm. like what what kind of thoughts were going through your head when you were just kind of like by yourself? Well, as a, like, from a kid? Mm hmm Well, from a kid, like, I didn't, like, came from a real, like, 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 rough household. You feel me? Like, a broken family. Mm hmm So, with young parents, while they were finding themselves as well, you know, we were growing with them. So, it's Sheesh. like, by the time, right, by the time I was, like, 11, by the time I was 11, 10 or 11, it's like, I was on, like, the... I was on like the metro bus going here, there, here, mm -hmm. there, just hanging out, you know, with the normal 11 year old kid would be in the house doing his homework. Well, I'm just with my cousin and my brother and we probably at some girl's house or something. We just out in the world and I'm tagging along with them the whole time, just thinking, thinking raps in my head, just somewhere. You feel me? And it was, it was rough. Like parents split the normal story. You know mm -hmm. how it is, but it's like had all that weight on me. You know, at that time, like, oh, where are we moving to now? Where are we gonna live? I don't even remember ever. Sheesh. Living How many in places there. did you like move? I like I was, I don't remember living in one place for more than two years in my whole life. That's crazy. Yeah, that's. Fast. Are you talking about house to house or like city to city? House to house. We moved around L.A., but mm -hmm. eventually we moved out. We we moved to Moreno Valley. We moved to Palmdale once upon a time. <laughs> in in two thousand six, we were in Palmdale. In two thousand. 10 to 11, we were in Moreno Valley. Yeah, but we'll always come back home to LA. Shit, at that point, you didn't even have like a close group of homies at that time, too. Well, we Not never, really. It was never, there was never a chance to really have that close group of homies and stick with them. But it's like every, every place I would stop, I would have like that one close homie. And we still are like real cool, you know, but mm -hmm. we ain't like the, the best friends, but we still cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, um, when when did you start like first professionally like recording your music? Man, when I was uh when I was fourteen, me and my little cousin, how old are you? I'm not an age actually. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. But when I was fourteen, when I was an age, <laughs> I'm so I, confused. We'll get into oh, okay, it. Okay, okay. I went to the studio with my little cousin, and um, it was like it was like a, a house studio. And it was my first time, like, like making a song. And uh, we made a song, and he got on it. And then his dad heard the record. And his dad, like, heard him on the record and was like, oh, like, he was telling him what he could do, like, what he could be. And I was like, I believe it, you know? And then, like, we just seen it, like, happening. Mm. Like, his dad was really pushing him. And I was like, dang, this, this is possible. You feel me? So... Like that, that little, that little moment of just that belief that was instilled in him. I was like, dang, this, this is possible. So dang, they probably don't even know that that like pushed me a little to see that like, okay, this could happen. Like seeing him in big studios, seeing him with big artists. I was like, dang, this, this could happen with me too. Cause mm. I was just doing it. Like I wanted to be big, but I didn't know it could really happen. And um, when I seen that it could really happen, just being 14, seeing it just happen, I put all my money into it. Every every cent I own. If I had my last two dollars for a sandwich, I'll spend it, I'll save it to spend it on some like we need a studio session, bro. Facts, facts. I could eat later. And you wanna know it's crazy? I never pay for studio time. Cause okay. I was the type of dude that was like, How much y'all paying for studio time? Okay, this amount, but this microphone costs this amount. 
and I'll just buy microphones or, or buy an interface or buy an inbox or and I'll do smart. everything myself. Yeah. Cameras, everything. I got like five, six cameras. Yeah, that's I got like three, it, four mics, five mics. <laughs> Facts. Good for you. You know, is it fair to say that you are Kendrick Lamar influenced? Because A, the first record that you have out is Negus in the Field. And then the first record on Knucklehead is African Booty Scratcher. I think both of those, the first time I heard both of those terms was mm -hmm. from Kendrick Lamar. Oh, that's crazy because I didn't know Kendrick ever said uh, African Booty Scratcher. But oh that's yeah. tight though if he right. did. Shout out to Kendrick. It's crazy. Um, I went through a phase where I was very religious. Very religious. And it so happened to be the time where Kendrick came up. You feel me? And when he was making like uh, uh, the Good Kid Mad City mm -hmm. and... And I was, I, when I said I was religious, I was like radically religious. And I did not listen to any secular music. I was so against it. I didn't listen to anyone. And I'm a huge NWA fan and I cut them out. The only person I didn't cut out was Michael Jackson. I would only listen to gospel music. So my first time hearing To Pimp a Butterfly, Good Kid, Mad City was when Damn came out. I was on a road trip and we played the whole, C the CDs, yeah. That's so crazy. It's it, it's it's crazy that. What got you so like that deep into religion? Oh, dog. Well, see, my like my homies that I was hanging with, they were they were into. It. I was always Christian though, mm -hmm. you know. But my homies who was into it, they start getting real serious about it, and they took it to a, a extent that I didn't know could that it was possible. You know, we began to look at. The normal Christian, like you're not Christian enough, you feel mm. me? We would judge them and point at them, like, wait, you only go to church on Sundays? You're not Christian enough. Mm. You get me? And that's where I became. I became real judgmental. I became real bitter. I became real ugly. Got you. Got you. Feel you. me? And that, like, you could kind of have an idea if I'm judging these Christians, how I would judge a secular artist. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not about to listen to that. I ain't listening to this. I'm not blah 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 blah. But when I I'm not religious anymore. And when I did leave that, I didn't got so religious that I became not religious. I didn't read so much that I'm not <laughs> religious. Yeah. And uh after that I was like open to to more more like, you know, beliefs. Like I, I was accepting to other people's beliefs mm -hmm. and other people's music. I love Kendrick Lamar. You feel me? So when I did hear him, I was like, dang, I seen similarities. You feel me? It's crazy. A lot of people would be like, sit back and be like, yeah, right. He got all that from Kendrick. He got mm -hmm. this from Kendrick. But it's like, where did Kendrick get it from? You feel got me? It from something. He got it from something. And if he came from around the corner from where I came from, then it's not so hard to believe that I might have got it from something else. People who are inspirational often get in inspired by something else. Something else. You feel me? Not saying that I was never inspired by Kendrick. Uh, I don't know what he inspired me by, but I've never heard anything I wasn't inspired mm -hmm. by. I was either inspired not to do something or inspired to do something. So anybody can inspire me. You feel me? Anything can inspire me. Amen to that, man. I got to go back, but uh, why do you not have an age? <laughs> I actually <laughs> I actually don't uh, believe in the concept of age. I feel like... Whew. All I right. Don't, I don't believe in the concept of Let's age. Let's get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that uh, I believe that we should be held accountable for how we act. You feel me? There was one month you were sitting in the classroom being a 17-year-old kid, mm -hmm. having to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. And uh, five months later, you might be 18 and you might have graduated and you can just go to jail for fighting you know, something you could have done in school mm. and now no one's looking at you to raise your hand to go to the bathroom and now you're you you're to be held accountable for everything you do. You you have full responsibility of yourself, which you're not used to. You feel me? So I feel like it that, that line there's a thin line between that. I feel like we should be held accountable for what we know and what we do and how we act. If mm. I'm acting fifteen, hold me accountable for that. You feel me? There could be a there could be a child who's never left their house who's never seen the outside, he could have been living in his house until he was 30. And there could have been a child that was 14 that had been outside since he was 14, and he's probably 16 now. So this 16-year-old 
knows way more than this 30 year old and he might be older than this 30 year old in the mind older mm. mentally he might know more than him he not might physically. be more experienced yeah. oh yeah not physically you feel me like there's I, I, the physical form like there could be a, a 14 year old more out of shape than a 50 year old you yeah. know depending on how you treat yourself but as far as like that concept of age, I feel like it holds a lot of people back, especially in hip hop. Mm -hmm. This is like the only genre where we so fascinated on age. Like it, if you get this age, you don't belong in hip hop no more. You expired or something. It's like, but when you're in like jazz or rock or we got Mick Jagger hmm. and all them dudes still performing and still like, you know, people still want to see Kiss perform or whatever. I don't know all the rock I bands, get what but, you're you know. saying, man. I was literally just telling my barber or, or the barber who I went to today because he said he was an actor too. And I said, you know, the difference between like rap and acting is that when you're an actor, you can start acting like as soon as you're born mm -hmm. and you can keep on acting until you're 60. Mm -hmm. But I think people put a cap like if you're at least 30 years old, it's like you no longer you're too belong old in hip hop. To be... Yeah, you, you know, you're too old to rap. Yeah, and another thing like, People would feel like they're too old to do something. Like, okay, I got this age now. Now I got to start acting this way. Now I got to start dressing this way. I feel like you, you, you make yourself get old with your mind, mm. the way you, the way you're thinking about it. You feel me? But like me, when I was 19, I, I stopped thinking about my age. And people would ask me, how old am I? And I would really have to count and think, like, wait, how old am I? You feel me? Mm. But I just stop telling myself I, I don't I don't believe in that and then some people would try to get it out of me and I'd be like come on bro I don't believe in it you yeah. know like you know and no need to press you if you know Muslim don't eat pork <laughs> you ain't about to force feed them <laughs> you know so it's like I just I just don't believe in the concept I feel like um like however I'm acting right now like hold me accountable for that so Tommy man for the knucklehead EP uh first of all I forgot to tell you this but shout out to vintage man vintage oh has been my on here God. Vintage is crazy. Yeah, she's dope. It's crazy. Even songs she wasn't a part of, I would call her and be like, yo, here, listen to this. Like, what'd you think? What? How should I say this part? How should I do this? Just because I really value her opinion and her mm -hmm. ear. You feel me? I, I, I really do. So she had a lot to do with this EP. You feel me? Shout out to Vintage. She's well, it's so only good dope. that you like had her on, what, the last song of the project. The last song, yeah. It's crazy because uh, we made that song... And um, I think I think me and Don, we were like, dang, we should get Vintage to sing this hook. She mm -hmm. would kill it. And when she came over, I was like, all right, say this. You got to be it. Uh, you got to be it. Uh. You feel me? And she was like, I got you. I got you. She got on the mic. And literally, th that was one take. Whatever it became, Good shit. she yeah. did it. And we didn't tell her to do all that extra shit. But we were like, dog, we didn't know we needed that. We needed it. Well, shout out to Vintage, man. Yeah, she's so dope. So She's for so the uh, for the knucklehead EP man, are you gonna come out with any like uh, music videos? Oh, of course. One thing like I'm a very visual artist. Like mm -hmm. people know me for my visuals. So I wanted to release the EP with a visual. You know, I wanted to do that, but I felt like I've always released visuals, and I was like, nah, let's see what this music do by itself. Let's see how much they love it. You know, I don't want them to love it because of the visual. I want them to love it for what they hear, and you know, it did. It did good for my first release it did great for my first release so i was like yeah this deserves the best visual and that's coming bro amen bro do we have like a release date on that or not yet okay. not yet you feel me i'm actually in full control of all my visuals you know like as far as like shooting editing everything like i would literally film my own visuals you know and it's like right now i'm getting all that i'm writing it together i'm getting actors for certain scenes i mm -hmm. need them in you know and extras and all that and uh, as soon as that's done, like, it's popping. I'm into that, man. It's popping. So, Tommy, let me just ask you a round of, like, super quick questions, yeah, all right? Let's get it. So, we're obviously at the lunch table at night. Yeah. But uh, what's your favorite lunch, man? What's my favorite lunch? My favorite lunch. It's crazy. I love fries. I love yes. fries. Like, chicken, love chicken guy, shrimp man. fries, chili <laughs> cheese fries, pastrami. <laughs> I just love fries, dog. Like, Some poutine, fries, huh? Fire. Fries are some fire. fucking gravy and all that. I Whew. could eat fries every day. Like, I love fries. Okay, then what, what's the best, like, fast food fries? The best fast I'm saying, food I'm saying McDonald's, bro. McDonald's? All, McDonald's, bro. Oh, bro. I'm, all day. Nah, nah, they too salty. They taste weird. I love the salt, bro. Yeah. Oh Filipinos love salt, man. Uh, McDonald's ain't it, but um, let me see. <laughs> fast food. 
Dang, I've been I've been staying away from fast food lately, like the little the, the McDonald's, the Jack in the Box joints. But I don't know, but I know Jack in the Box even tastes better than McDonald's. They I mean, fries. I mean, they got the curly McDonald's. fries, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that that true. Yeah. You know, that beats everything else. <laughs> yeah, Jack in the Box. Oh, Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. I uh, love. That not fries. over the McDonald's, man. I oh, don't you know. tripping, bro? Chick Fil A with their sauce. <laughs> You, I'm wow. talking about the fries by itself, dog. You factor Bro, in the sauce. It's bro, like, all right. When you eat the fries and you've oh had the sauce before, it reminds you so much of the sauce that you don't even care. You all right, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not finna like argue over this shit because this is your answer. Yo, so uh who who's um your dream collaboration, both artist and producer? Snoop and Dre. Okay. Snoop as and artist and producer? Dre as the producer. Okay, okay. You know, Snoop as as the as the clear. I had Snoop in my ad libs. You know, Snoop and Dre. Damn, or he just Cube said he just for the ad libs. Like, or, not or, even a whole record. Or a Cube and Dre. You okay. know, we can finish the Helter Skelter. You feel me? We can put it out. Shout out <laughs> to DLC. Shout out to DLC. I see that, man. Me? And last question, man. What is one random music fact about you that people may not know? I love Journey. Don't stop. Believe in. I mean, that's the only Journey song I think I know, and a whole bunch of people yeah, only know, bro. I, I love Journey. <laughs> they really uh, helped me through a lot. Helped me through a lot of like depressive moments. Oh, wow. You feel me? Yeah, okay. Journey's dope. Hell yeah. That's Facts. what's up, bro. Well, Tommy Sketch, man. We're also going to have him rap oh, in just yeah. a bit. Yeah, Facts. you feel Facts. me? Facts. So uh, check that out. That is what I do. I that do is rap. what he does, man. Also, check out <laughs> that uh, Knucklehead EP out right now everywhere. Facts. This Knucklehead is the lunch EP. table. Food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Tommy Sketch. Hey. Yee!